We live in a pretty interesting time where no matter what category you're looking for, cameras are getting really good really fast, whether you're on the high end or even the low end. And really one area that has really intrigued me lately is 360 cameras. But for me, they've always been plagued with one major thing, and it's that the image quality just isn't all that good. It has definitely gotten better with the latest generation of 360 cameras, but if you're comparing to, you know, like a cinema camera or a mirrorless camera, or even sometimes your phone, the quality is just not quite there. But that is where this comes in, the Insta360 ONE RS 1 inch 360 edition, which is a mouthful of a name, but this 360 camera is packing a punch that you really can't get with any other version. Now this has been out for quite a while now, but after making the video on the Insta360 X3 a few months ago, Insta360, you know, heard in that video my complaints about some of the image quality and thought that this might be the solution because of those one inch sensors. And well, I think they were right. This thing is packing a lot more inside and it makes it a camera that if you care about image quality and that's kind of the top thing that you want, this is the one to get. So a few months ago, I went on a trip visiting a bunch of the ghost towns out in the Utah Western Desert, doing about 250 miles off-road. It was a super fun trip, lots of great times, lots of good off-roading. But the only video camera I brought with me was this 360 camera, because I really wanted to put it to the test and see what it could do. And well, as you can see from the footage here, it packs a ton of detail built in, and that's thanks to the hardware that is inside. And now when you look at the super long name, the Insta360 ONE RS comes first, because that's essentially what this camera is, and the 360 part of it is what you add onto the camera. The ONE RS is a modular action camera, basically, that you can change the screen around, you can change the camera, and it's a really neat concept that works really well, but with this larger 360 camera, since the sensors are so big, they kind of rearrange everything into more of a traditional form factor that you expect from a 360 camera, but it also comes apart and you can use it as a 360 camera, or you could go back and use it as that action camera in, you know, ONE RS style. So in this package, you are getting the brain basically, which comes with the screen and all the internals. And the screen is, I mean, it, it works. It's definitely not ideal. It's still pretty small, but it lets you, you know, set up your shot and see a preview of what the camera is seeing. But compared to something like the X3, you kind of get spoiled there. This is definitely smaller. And since it is modular, it would be nice to see Insta360 come out with something that maybe expanded that screen into something bigger. I don't know, maybe for the next generation, that'd be something they could do. Then you have the battery, which sits below it, and then on top is where you have that 360 module, and it all stacks together and you know looks like one completed package when it's put together, but it all comes apart. But what you're really buying this for is on top that one inch 360 camera system. So there's actually two one inch sensors here, one for each side, and this gives you 360 degree capture in 6K. Now, because of the nature of 360 video, when you think 6K, you think like super high resolution, and while that is true, you still have to remember that in 360 video, it is being stretched and warped to fit a normal screen most of the time. So if you're doing that, it's not going to be like the crystal clear image that maybe you're expecting, but having more data there, more pixels means that when you do stretch it, you're getting a better image than if you take say a 5K or 4K image and do the same thing. Having more resolution just means a better end result. And you know, I think if you've been in the camera world at all, when you get to that one inch sensor mark, that's when things start to really change. And it's kind of like the goal for a lot of these smaller cameras is to get to that sensor size because it means a few different things. First is you just get a bigger sensor, which means you can gather more light. And I think the main thing for that is that you get better low light performance. Small cameras are notorious for not performing well when the light gets low. And when you have a 360 image, that's even worse because you're stretching it and really zooming into what the image is looking like. So having the biggest sensor possible to gather the most amount of light, I mean, that's an ideal way to do it. And this just does it the best of any 360 camera I've used, at least the, you know, consumer consumer, prosumer ones. But that sensor is also giving you more dynamic range. So from the lights to the shadows, you're gonna be able to see everything all in really good detail. And overall, I mean, I'm just really happy with how the images turned out in terms of quality. They have a ton of detail, they have a lot of dynamic range, and wherever I point the camera, it looks good, even if I zoom in a lot. Although I will say, I mean, you still have to be realistic about what the image is going to look like. This is still a relatively small sensor in the, you know, the grand scheme of things, and it is being stretched to that 360 
360 format, so it's not like it's going to be perfect, but compared to something like the Instant360 X3, which is more of the consumer version of this, it definitely does look better, and it's kind of what I was looking for. So this also has Insta360's flow state stabilization built in, which is, I mean, pretty much perfect. It's about as good of stabilization as you can expect from any camera, and it just nails it every time. So you can really be moving the camera quite a bit, and everything is nice and smooth. And you can do things like lock the horizon, so no matter which way you're pointing the camera, it's gonna just keep everything steady. And if you're driving over a bunch of bumps, like I was this entire trip, it really mellows those out, and you really don't even notice at all. It's pretty impressive how well it works. But I think really my favorite thing about this camera is when you get back to your computer or your phone and start editing the clips that you shot. Because honestly, when you're shooting with this camera, it's kind of a boring process. You don't really have to think about it. It's not like a traditional camera where I have to point it and you know compose the shot. There's still a little bit of that with a 360 camera, but really it's like a point and shoot and then I can deal with it later because I can take those 360 images and reframe it wherever I want. And this is certainly doable on the Insta360 app, but to get the best quality possible, you really wanna do it on your desktop since you can export in ProRes and that is just like the optimal quality that you can get. So that's the way I do it. I mean, it really doesn't matter which one you go. I just like to do it on the desktop. But here, this is where you can adjust pretty much everything. So as basic as the aspect ratio, you know, 16 by nine, or for me, I shoot these videos in 2.35 to one. So I can just select that right here and it automatically does that. Or I could do, you know, more advanced things like track subjects. So if I wanted it to always be focused on me, I can set that tracking. It'll go through the clip on its own and use AI to track me. And it works really well and makes it a lot more seamless. But if you want even more manual control, which is kind of what I do most of the time, you can go in and use keyframes to really select each individual point and where you want the camera to be looking. And that's why I say, you know, it's more fun to edit this footage rather than shoot it because really when you're shooting, you just hold the camera there and then you get to have fun later on and see what kind of cool images you can get from this. Now there are two things about this camera that for the next generation, I hope they kind of address or at least change in some way. The first one is battery life. I just don't find it to be all that good. So it is nice that you can swap out the batteries so you can buy multiple ones if you wanted to. Or if you're like me, I just use an external power bank when I'm not using the camera, unplug it and start recording. And that seems to work okay. But the battery life, eh, it's not that good. And I already mentioned the screen, which is definitely on the smaller side, but it does work. So it's not really a big deal. But the other thing is just kind of annoying is that the SD card is kind of, you know, Know, sandwich in between these different components. So you have to take the entire camera apart in order to reach the SD card. And it's just, it's just not the most convenient. You can always plug in over USB-C to your computer to offload the files, which is definitely easier, but I like to do the SD card method because I, I just, that's just how I do it. And it would be nice if it was easier to access them. So if for the next generation, they fix those, this is gonna be an A plus camera. So uh, for me, I mean, overall, this replaces the Insta360 X3 in pretty much every way, because for me, the main thing I care about is image quality. And this is giving you that with those one inch sensors and 6K footage. But is it worth it coming from the X3 or if you're looking to buy either one and you'd wanna save some money, get the X3 or spend a little more and get this? Hmm, I think it depends on what your use case is. If you're like me and want the best image quality, then this is obviously what you'd want. But if you're just gonna be posting to social media or just, you know, having fun with 360 video, the X3 is still a solid way to go. But I am glad I have this thing. It's the camera that's always in my bag, always with me, because with 360 degree video, the options are really endless.